and welcome everyone to another week of Talking Threads, the textile innovation show with me, Fiona Harron. And me, Jessica Owen. This week, we're focusing on sustainable water repellent technologies, a topic that has generated a lot of interest in recent years as companies in the sportswear and outdoor market try and find alternatives to widely used but harmful perfluorocarbon chemistries. Yes, for decades the industry has been relying on what's known as perfluorooctane sulfonate, also known as PFOS, and perfluorooctanoic acid, also known as PFOA, which belong to the family of perfluorochemicals known as PFCs. These chemistries offer highly durable oil and water repellent properties, yet they are known to cause threats to the environment and people. This is because they either degrade extremely slowly or not at all. Yes, so far researchers have discovered that PFCs reduce the effectiveness of vaccines, are carcinogenic and can impact reproductive systems, which is why companies such as Helly Hansen and the Rudolph Group, who we will be speaking to later on in the show, have been searching for safer and more sustainable alternatives. Before that though, let's have a look at this week's news. First up, researchers at the University of California, San Diego, are developing a colour-changing test strip that can be stuck on a face mask and used to detect SARS-CoV-2 in a user's breath or saliva. The strip will collect particles throughout the day and then it can be used to test if the person is infected or not by using a kit that's similar to a home pregnancy test. Non-Woven's manufacturer Berry Global Group is investing over $70 million in its US wipe substrate capabilities. The funds will be used to establish a new line producing additional capacity and enabling the company to better serve its global customers. Supporting the continuing growth of business will also be a focus area. The US investment has a targeted commercialization date of the March quarter 2023. Elsewhere, Mechanicswear, a leader in high-performance hand protection, and Climate, an innovation leader in intelligent thermal technologies for wearables, have announced a new partnership which will allow Mechanicswear to launch the first work glove in the US with an intelligent, self-regulating and activating heating system tailored to each individual's optimum comfort levels. Climate's technology allows users to control their heating comfort throughout the Climate app, creating a unique thermal profile that automates the gloves to their ideal body temperature. In collaboration with Infinity Fibre, Weekday, a H&M brand, has introduced a limited edition version of its row jeans using 100% post-consumer waste to make a completely recyclable, breathable, cotton-like fabric. The material used to make the jeans consists of 50% organic cotton and 50% Infinna, which comes from reborn textile waste. The Infinna row jeans are now available in Weekday's online store and the price is the same as for the conventional model, further establishing the need to democratise more sustainable fashion choices, according to H&M. Now on to today's show, and our first guest is the Category Managing Director at Heli Hansen, Philip Tavell. The Norwegian manufacturer and retailer of sports and outdoor wear has recently launched a new responsible and breathable waterproof technology called Leafa Infinity Pro. So here's Philip to explain more about it. Hello Philip, thank you for joining me today. Um, so Leafa Infinity Pro is Heli Hansen's new sustainable waterproof technology. Um, can you tell me how it works, how it's made and how you've managed to steer clear of chemicals and also those infamous PFCs? Absolutely. Thank you for having me uh, and talking about this interesting topic. In the Leaf Infinity Pro, the base and the core of that technology is actually a based on the fiber that we came across and, and started to develop the first base layer in 1970s. So, and obviously we have to fast forward to today's date roughly to look into why we're using the fiber, but the fiber as such has an inherited hydrophobic property, meaning that it hates water, it doesn't absorb any water. So if you weave it in a specific way and use that fiber, you can actually create something that is, has a hydrophobic and a DWR property without adding any chemicals because the fiber as such has those properties built into it. So it, it comes in a two and a three layer technology. It's a face fabric with the Leafa fibers. 
it's a membrane with a leaf of fiber and then depending on if it's a three layer or two layer so it's really the fiber that is the the beauty and the uniqueness in this uh, technology where we've been able to create something from our heritage but making it into an innovation is something that as you said doesn't have to use any chemicals because the fiber as such is hydrophobic Okay, interesting. Um, so I understand that finding sustainable waterproof alternatives is quite difficult. And I think even more so if you were to look at oil repellents, for example. So how long has it taken you to develop Leafa Infinity Pro? And what were the biggest challenges that you encountered? Um, as I just mentioned, I mean, the learnings we have acquired since the 1970s has really given us a lot of solid know-how how this fiber works challenge or uh, positive and, and challenging sides of that fiber it was roughly around 2014 when we started to um kick start this process and because that was when the industry changed from c8 to c6 and um, and we realized that it's not like long long-term pfc's will be banned uh, and way back then, 2000, 2014, we started looking into, I mean, we have this fiber, can we make something else out of that fiber than just the base layer? So we've done a insulation with it and now a uh, technical performance garment. And um, I mean, I think the biggest challenge was, or still is, that there's no blueprint. Since we are the only brand, um, that is use, using it and the first brand to come up with this technology, we have had to learn everything from start, from scratch. So our R&D team and fabric team has worked endlessly on different ways of finding the best surface tension, how to bond or laminate the membrane to the face fabric. Because of the hydrophobic qualities, it doesn't act the same way as normal polyester or nylon. So you have to learn everything from scratch. I think that has been the biggest challenge. No one, we haven't been able to go to a fabric mill or chemistry or another, another brand for that matter to ask, how did you solve this solution? Everything has been new. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, it's super exciting, but also um, time consuming and uh, gray hairs. Mm, yeah, I can imagine. Um, so lastly, then, um, I wanted to ask the textile and apparel industry, I think it's fair to say that people are quite aware of the problem regarding PFCs now, uh, hence the introduction of technologies such as yours. But are consumers aware of the problem? And do they even need to be or should it just be up to brands to offer something that's safe and that's sustainable in the first place? I think to, to start with, it is it is absolutely up to the brands to find new solutions. That is not up to the consumers. Consumers are expecting certain features or qualities from brands. Um, I do think today consumers are very well educated because of the transparent global society we're working. So they I think it's very important for us to educate them in terms or show them that there are other alternatives um, to so they can choose what they feel is best for them but it's definitely up to, to the brands and also the governments to support change and, and make it uh, an environment for innovation and come up with new solutions. So essentially, it's a structural and engineering development that the team at Heli Hansen has created. That's very interesting. And I'm sure that many companies will be taking note of this to see if they can develop something similar, especially considering how challenging it seems to be to develop something that's safe and equally performing. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I was speaking to Philip earlier before the interview, he said that Heli Hansen held a couple of workshops about Leafa Infinity Pro at ISPO the other week, and that many competitors were very keen to see how the company had finally come up with a sustainable waterproof alternative. But you also said that the company is actually quite happy to share some of that expertise on this, though, because sustainability is a team effort. So that's a really great attitude, I think. 
Now it's time for a short video from this week's sponsor, Baldwin. And after that, we'll be catching up with Alberto De Conti from the Rudolph Group to talk about two new sustainable performance finishes it has launched. The non-contact precision spray Texco G4 system dramatically cuts waste, chemicals and energy consumption while improving quality and productivity. A truly sustainable technology. We use non-contact hydraulic spray technology to apply carefully metered amounts of chemicals to either one side or both sides of the fabric. We give the choice to the customer. So what we have here is a, a single nozzle with a pressurized chemical supply. In the Texcoat machine, we repeat the valve and nozzle technology at regular intervals across the machine. So then we can guarantee the customer that on each location we're accurately metering the flow and have a good spray pattern. The valve rail is designed to be easily removed and replaced in the machine. A single person operation. This ensures good uptime of the machine. The Texcoat system comes with a fully featured control system that offers the user a full process control. Our customers are seeing the benefit of no chemical loss when changing the fabric colour because there is no contamination of the chemistry by the, the, the fabric particles. We have zero chemical waste in the system. We take one example with water repellent when running uh, upholstery fabrics. We allow the customer to dramatically reduce uh, the amount of water used in the uh, chemical addition. Pickups are reduced from 70% to 15%. So a 70% reduction in the amount of water in the process, 70% reduction in the energy in the process. But uh, just as importantly, with the low amount of water used in the uh, water repellent process, the customer now has the ability to simultaneously apply a backside coating and uh, apply both processes just ahead of the stenter and uh, save an entire drying step with both e further energy and productivity advantages. Welcome back. Now, I recently caught up with Alberto De Conti, Rudolph Group's Head of Marketing and Fashion Division, about two new durable water repellent technologies it has launched for the textile industry. Named Ruco Dry Bio CGR and NPE, the new products are entirely based on natural components. So hi Alberta, um, could you start by explaining more about the plant-derived processing waste that your new performance finishes are based on? Sure Fiona, um, at the beginning of this year, uh, the Rudolf Group has launched two uh, pretty amazing product innovations. The first one is called Uco Dry Bio CGR, and that's an absolute breakthrough as it is the first durable water repellent, so the DWR, uh, based on, on plant-derived process waste. So, in fact, uh, Ruko Dry by CGR is, is made of natural waste that accumulates as byproduct during the processing of cereal grains in the food industry. So, we are talking about uh, human food. So, that leftover material that would otherwise be disposed of is refined to create a powerful water and stain repellent textile finish. That's definitely a first and something that, you know, it was never really seen in our industry. What's really spectacular, I think, is that by, by turning that natural waste into DWR, uh, the, our R&D has maximized the biomass content uh, to more than 90%, you know, which is unheard of. The other product innovation, so we are talking about two, not just one, and that is called like Ruco Dry Bio NPE, uh, as it's, you know, it's equally outstanding in terms of novelty. In this case, the uh, DWR is entirely based on a, on a carefully selected mix of natural plant extracts. So this um, well-balanced mix of plant-based ingredients combines excellent water repellents and stain repellent effects with you know, breathability and natural handle. Okay, so this is this is where we stand. Yeah. And, and, and what would you say were the main challenges that you faced perfecting the technology? Well, several. Uh, the Rudolf Group uh, is, you know, sort of guardian of a, of a certain conscious knowledge, especially when it comes to pioneering technologies that help transforming the textile and fashion industries. Um, 
Think about what happened 15 years ago when the Rudolf Group over the past uh, couple of decades uh, invented, introduced actually fluorine free water repellency. That's something that not everybody knows, but it was really invented at Rudolf uh, just to replace the traditional fluorocarbons, etc., which we have seen in the movie Dark Waters for those who have seen it. Um, the challenge in that case was to study how Mother Nature does certain things and, and biomimicry, so the study of lotus leaves, bird feathers, you name it, was instrumental uh, to reproduce certain performance in a, in a technologically advanced form. In this case, so nowadays, Rudolf had, had to push the R&D boundaries well beyond fluorine free and literally embrace nature to understand which natural components could actually serve a certain purpose and how water repellent performance entirely based on, on natural components could meet the required needs in terms of you know, quality, durability, shelf life, and, and of course cost. Um, last but not least, one of the challenges was to ensure that the selected raw materials do not compete in any way with human or animal nutrition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And finally, how will Rudolf Group continue to build on this natural approach to finishes in future? You see, um, the combination of, of, of modern chemical R&D and, and environmental consciousness is known within the Rudolf Group as aspirational chemistry. Uh, something that we want to be in the future to be a guiding light for the industry and that describes our efforts and our responsibility. Uh, because we, we aim for a significant number of our products to be sourced from, from renewable raw materials, uh, there are new hero brands, we call them that way, that we are launching to capture a new logic, you know, in the integration of, of biologic and or recycled sources. Both Ruko Dry, BioCGR, and NP that we just talked about are, are marketed through a brand that we, we call BioLogic, a brand that is going to host all our product propositions that are <clears throat> based on, on biocarbon rather than traditional oil. Something that we haven't unveiled yet, uh, but it's, if it's coming, it's another brand that will be called Psychologic and that will house all new product propositions that come from recycled raw materials, which is very challenging. Not necessarily biological sources. Think of polyester, just an example. This is a, a, a radically new approach uh, when it comes to traditional textile chemistry. I mean, the use of both biologic and recycled sources. A great example there of how biomimicry is being used to enhance textile innovation. And not only does it bring new life and purpose to natural byproducts, but it's also able to enhance the performance properties of fabrics, which, as mentioned earlier, is often considered a key challenge when it comes to sustainable alternatives. Yes, definitely. And all while ensuring that the natural sources used don't compete with human or animal nutrition. And it can only spell good news for brands and retailers who are looking to reduce or eradicate products based on PFCs, knowing that bio-based solutions can provide the same, if not better, technical functions than their previous products. Well, everyone, that is it for this week, but join us again next time when we'll be taking a look at the golden fleece of textiles, also known as melt-blown non-wovens. We'll be joined by a couple of the big players in the industry, so be sure to tune in at the usual time of 3pm UTC. See you then.